the reason I haven't been on YouTube making like YouTube videos for a little while is because I've been playing PlayStation 1. Not uh not PlayStation 1, the console. I don't have one of those anymore. I sold it years ago. But uh, the emulator, EPSXE. Now, I've been using that emulator for years, at least a, like I don't know, what, maybe almost a decade or so. But um they've come out with 2.0, version 2.0, and it's a little bit improved. Um and when I started like noticing the little improvements and having really good success with everything working smoothly for me, um, it just got really nostalgic and started playing a lot of old PlayStation 1 games lately. And I spent days and days just like trying to get the perfect graphic settings. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll show you a little bit about what I mean. Um, let's see. I would have like like in this shot I would go into the game with native resolution everything on like default no filters no shaders no assistance in any way just the native game uh, and then I would take a screenshot and then I would exit the game and change one little thing and then take a screenshot and do that over and over and over and I spent at least a day doing that and that way I could have side-by-side -side comparisons like for instance here, um, the only thing that's going to change is look at this area that shows the uh, the geometry here. Like it looks like a a, a pentagon. Now watch the next slide is going to be the same thing, all the same settings. Only instead of native resolution, I bump it up to high resolution. So here we go, one, two, three. See how it smooths it up a little. And then the next one, same thing, except for instead of high res, very high res. One, two, three. And then the next one, ultra high. One, two, three. And it cleans it up a lot. But then you still got these jaggies over here, you know what I'm saying? You got the jaggy like along the slash and the FA. So on the next one I try with shader 1, didn't make much difference. Shader 4, now it blurred it up a bit but it's a lot cleaner looking. So on the next one I try some other things. This one is uh, a cheap little filter, didn't make much difference but it helps a little. Now this one, 2 times Sal, oh look how smooth everything looks, a lot smoother but what it does is you end up losing uh, some of the geometry or whatever you lose lose some textures it causes glitches watch without it and then with it um, look at the orientation of this box top left corner of this box right see this little black dot and see how it seems separated here now without it see how it's perfectly smooth like a right angle now with it see how it jumps it up so it causes a little bit of distortion or whatever so that's why I don't use two times cell textures because the distortion becomes a little bit apparent here and there. Um, and now here's one with texture filtering on and this is actually the best looking one of them all. However, I can't use it because I'm a purist and it causes one main noticeable thing. Look at the wing here on the back and watch without it. You can see there's more here. With it, it cuts it off. It just cuts off the end and so without it with it it cuts some things off now it doesn't look like a big deal here but for certain things in the game it cuts off huge chunks of some texture and so because of that it's something i can't use i just can't tolerate uh something completely chopped up looking sometimes you know like a bad glitch uh, this is uh right here this is my favorite setting i've tried like all day this was the one i think gave the best results Everything's as smooth as it's going to get, but without losing, you know, without ha losing your integrity of having, like, the original looking image without any major glitches anywhere, you know. So, anyways, these are my settings, and I, I was fair, and I did them, like, from inside, I did them from outside, like, see, here's some pink right here, and then, oh, look, you lost the pink on the afterburners with this one change or something. So, I was looking for every possible glitch or error, and I tried everything. I was very thorough. These are cartoon shaders. I tried every shader made for the emulator. And even though you only see a few, like, references here, I had folders and folders and folders with, like, a thousand pictures of references, and I would just sit there all day. So, I have fine-tuned the settings, and if you like PlayStation 1 emulation, uh... You can take advantage of all that work I put into like setting up the perfect settings and just you know pause the video right here and copy all my settings down because these are I think the best settings you're gonna get without compromising on um, the original image. You know what I'm saying? Like 
it keeps the original aspect ratio uh, nothing's getting chopped off or too glitchy or anything but it's the best graphics you can get without compromising now this one right here texture filtering none if you put this on standard it will look a little better you're gonna have no jaggies anywhere it'll get rid of all the jaggies but it's the one that chopped off the piece of the tail you know and it chops off some things and causes enough glitches to where as a purist myself I don't want to use it because I'm not comfortable with those alterations but if you just looking for the ultimate and picture quality I would suggest trying that one on standard and seeing if you're okay with the occasional glitches um, you would think some of these other ones like the extendeds or the standard plus smooth sprites would be even better but they're not I have side-by-side -side images that I would look at for like an hour like comparing back and forth actually number one standard looks smoother and has less jaggies than any of these ones below it uh, than anything else you can choose but it does have some glitches so anyways but I don't use it because of glitches so all these settings here these are the best that you're gonna have if you have a 1080 uh, display like 1920 by 1080 display if you don't then you might have to alter these two like if you had some other uh, native desktop resolution but make sure that you keep uh, the width you know appropriate to so you got your full height but not your full width so that way you keep that appropriate 4 by 3 aspect ratio unless you like stretched ugly images so anyways that's what I've been doing playing PlayStation 1 and uh, man has it been a lot of fun just getting back into the nostalgia of these classics you know what I'm saying and uh, I might do some videos of just like some old PlayStation 1 games or something I don't know but there's probably not too much interest for that it's more guilty pleasure for me personally to be able to sit here and chill and just relive you know the old games that I was playing when I was like an 18 year old you know what I mean so well, I think I don't know it's a 98 1999 so about 16 years ago so how old was I yeah I was 18 or so Now I know they have new Ace Combat games, but they try to make them more realistic, and in doing so, they made them bland and boring. These old games, they have more style. You know what I'm saying? Like they popped more. They have more artistic flair. Um, like in the late '90s, there was like X Files was a popular show, and the idea of uh, government having like top secret UFO related kind of aircraft well that was kind of popular in those days and then as you're progressing you keep unlocking cooler and cooler aircraft and then all of a sudden you start unlocking some crazy shit like this and you're like what <laughs> and you knew that this game had the licenses like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and McDonnell Douglas and you didn't know about this and then you start unlocking this kind of stuff at the end and you're like dang and it even kind of matched the rumors at the time like if you looked on the on the internet right now you'd see there's this uh, and you just type in Aurora uh, it's something that in you know amongst people who are like into the whole UFO stuff you know and believe in that they feel like this is some top secret black project government plane you know with UFO technology you know backwards engine reverse engineered but this was 1998 1999 and they're putting stuff like that in the game I mean how cool and interesting and stylish is that on a geeky sci-fi nerdy kind of level the fact that they you know what I mean they wouldn't do that nowadays nowadays it's all going for realism you know they don't play into a whole sci-fi fantasy you know vibe or theme and the Namco patented techno electronica soundtracks that they had in the games at the time like in Tekken and Ridge Racer it was so good you know what I mean the soundtrack to this game I still have it and just I use it the soundtrack to this game on some of my other videos just because I love the soundtrack in this game so much take off. I am taking off you take off and I would just fly around like whoa <laughs> just fly around like this all the time fly like upside down and stuff and the analog controls on this are working beautifully and um good god I haven't played in so long though and um the graphics man look at this for a PlayStation 1 on emulator it's looking damn good this is like I said guilty nostalgia trip pleasure 
And this is like akin to the feeling I get when I'm sim racing, only it's flying instead of racing, you know what I'm saying? Go under. Yeah, there we go. And all I'm all I'm saying about um, this 2.0 that's different for me in my experience has been that there's a little little bit more perfection when it comes to the accuracy of the emulation. Textures aren't quite as wavy as they go by and distorted looking as they were on some of the older versions. And you can use outside plugins for like control pads and things that before you used to have to use a program called PSX Shark. You don't have to use that anymore. You just drop them in and they just they're good to go. Um, there's some other stuff too, uh, little changes, but I just feel like the emulation is getting really good. It's starting to get pretty dang accurate. And, um, so anyways, try it out. Try those settings. I worked really hard to get those settings. I think this is good. You know what I mean? What PlayStation 1 looked like to my 18 year old eyes back in 1998, this is it. This is what I was seeing essentially. Every once in a while, I'll have the pop-ins or some little imperfections in the textures because of the emulation is not perfect. But I don't feel that. When I'm playing, you know, this is good enough. I'm immersed. You know what I'm saying? It feels really freaking good to me. I think they've got it nailed. You know what I'm saying? So let me go ahead and load up another game just to show you. You know what I'm saying? Like, different type of game. Something else. Let's see how... Hmm. Go ahead. While we're on the Namco vibe, Namco kicked ass in the late '90s on PlayStation. Man, they really did. You know, like Nintendo had like their Mario games, and you know, Rare. They had Rare, the company that pre uh, made like Donkey Kong Country on Super NES, and then GoldenEye on N64, and then Perfect Dark. Well, PlayStation instead of Rare, they had Namco. I'm cool. Man, they were making some kick ass games. And all their games had an amazing soundtrack, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tekken games? The soundtrack in these games was amazing. Like, every Namco game had a great soundtrack. Round this isn't one. my favorite song on this stage, but. Oh, yeah, I can 10 hit combo in this. I forgot. Come on. Ah, I didn't get it. I'll get it next round. Look at this graphics. Old 1999 Tekken 3. Oh, I went to go block low. It was a little slow. Come on now. Oh, oh. And you can sidestep in them. I like the sidestep. Look how good Tekken's looking on an emulator. You win. It's so, so sick. <laughs> Whatever he says. Boom. Round that bass, one. man. Fight. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can see PlayStation uh, 1 graphics, you know, they really are super, super low resolution. But now, with some good emulators and some good settings, you know, you can actually get these games looking pretty decent on a 1080p display. Um, I still would prefer to play it personally on, like, an old school TV with the original console and all that. And, you know, the way it was intended. But I don't have that. I don't have an old ancient CRT or, you know, old TV around. I don't have an old console around at the moment. And this is just more convenient, having an emulator. You can do, like, quick save. You can do, like, quick load. Um... And the resolution is higher, you know. I don't know if any of you guys ever played this whole game on uh, PlayStation Ridge Racer Type 4. Man. <coughs> Look at this cutscene. Like, watch this cutscene. And the cutscene, the chick's walking down the street. And, uh... The guy's like racing around and he stops, like he's in the lead or whatever, and he stops because he's so far ahead of the other guys. He rolls down the window, picks up the chick, you know, and then gets going again and <laughs> wins the race. Oh man, Japanese people, they would design the weirdest things, but there's so much style to it, you know what I'm saying? 
Everything was stylish, you know what I mean? This game was very stylish. The artistic styling in the game is so unique. When you're playing along, depending on what team you choose, you get these little animated little stories, you know, about like how the team's doing, how it feels about you, and your choices you're making, and your performance in the races. And it's just, this is really cute in artsy, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's arcadey, but it's so much fun because it's just unique. And uh, you'll see here's where he stops and picks it. He's like, well, let's see, I'm so far ahead of the opponent, so I guess I got time to pick up a chick. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> you know you're racing right now. She's like, ah, sexy car. It's crazy, man. Now, the cutscenes, these FMVs, even with whatever you change in your emulator settings, it doesn't really adjust the cutscenes much. Because it's not using, I guess, the internal graphics engine. It's used, These are just pre-recorded FMVs. So, they, they're going to look how they look. But the in-game graphics are kind of improved. I'm just going to skip ahead with a quick load or something. Now, Ridge Racer 4 suffers the most out of every game I've tried when it uh, comes to the old uh, wavy distortion effect. Like, if you look in the distance, I'm looking at the polygons, not at the racing, so that's why I'm hitting this guy. Um, if you look in the distance, and you'll just, damn, this guy's slow. I'm trying to get around the old Pac-Man car. Come on, man. So anyways, look in the distance and look at the, the pop-ins and some artifacts and some waviness. Like I said, out of every game I've tried, this game is the worst example when it comes to uh, perfect emulation, it's still got ways to go. But, it's better than it was on like version 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. It's a little better. It's less wavy than it was. And uh, to me, that's just enough to where I can get immersed. I can feel like, you know, like I'm playing on an original. I can get in there and get immersed and enjoy the game. And I, like I said, another great thing is that the controller support is very good now. Like, I can play with any kind of controller that I want, that I have laying around, and I'm going to have rumble support and perfect analog support. And You know what I'm saying? It feels really smooth, like as if I was playing it on an original PS1 control pad. It feels very good. I haven't tried using my wheel with, like, Gran Turismo or anything like that, because I don't think those these old PlayStation kind of games... I think they're best played with a controller the way they used to be, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can use a wheel for Gran Turismo and stuff, but it's an arcadey game. It's better on a controller, you know, that's kind of how it was meant to be anyways. So I do, um, I do use a controller for any old PlayStation 1 game. Um, I like the DualShock 3 the best out of all the controllers I've tried. Like, I've tried this one, I've tried the PlayStation 4 controller, and the Xbox 360, Xbox One Elite controller. And uh, this old DualShock 3, I think, is the best for me when it comes to PlayStation emulation. So anyways, there you go. Try my settings. I'm going to throw them up on the screen again if you want, and you're into emulation. You have the the time or the interest. You know, just grab a EPSX E 2.0 if you don't already have it. And you can pause the video here if you have it on 1080p so you can see the text clearly and just copy my settings and try those out because I spent so much time perfecting this and I think these are the best settings you can get at this time. And uh, good luck. Have fun. If you have any questions about emulation or anything in general, just leave them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer.